How are your friends? Josh here. I just want to talk briefly today about what might seem like an obvious point to some and emphasize just a couple of important implications of it. And that's the point that Jesus of Nazareth, the one who died on the cross, who rose again on the third day, was Jewish. That's right. Jesus was not a white European with long flowing hair and a neatly cropped beard. And even right now, as he sits at the right hand of God in the heavens, waiting for the day that his enemies are made his footstool, he still is a Jewish man. Now, you might be thinking, well, duh, he was born in Israel, uh, he was a son of Abraham, he was a son of David, of course he was Jewish. Now, while we often intellectually affirm this, we don't often think through some of the massive implications on what this means, especially for us 21st century Gentiles when we read the words of red in our Bible. So, what do I mean? Well, if Jesus was Jewish and he came to the Jewish people in the land of Israel 2,000 years ago, it's important for us to read his words and see the events of his life through that specific lens. Because Jesus and the Jews of the first century had a pre-existing worldview, just a very specific way of understanding God, the events that happened in Israel's history, where everything was headed, what the future held for the nation of Israel and for the world, etc. So the events we read about in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John were not the beginning of a new novel. They were later chapters in a continuing novel that began all the way back in Genesis, specifically with the promise of the seed in Genesis 3.15, the promises to Abraham in Genesis 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 17, where God said that it would be through Abraham's family that all the rest of the nations of the earth would be blessed. Now think about it. If we picked up a 10-chapter novel and started reading it at chapter 7, how much of the details of the story would we miss or get wrong or misunderstand or even misinterpret? I think this is why it's important to see that when Jesus came the first time, he was a Jew who came in context to a very Jewish story and that the words he spoke were in context to that story and that worldview. So why does this matter? Well, we have a tendency to be anachronistic, meaning we read our Bibles and primarily apply what we read to our situation and our time period with either little or no regard to what Jesus' words and actions meant to Jews in the first century. I think we tend to individualize or spiritualize things that were sometimes understood in the completely opposite way in Jesus' day as corporate or not spiritual at all. So if we want to be disciples of Jesus and we want to understand his message, I think we really need to get our hearts and our minds wrapped around the fact that his words and his actions mean something and they have tremendous meaning first and foremost for a first century Jew. Now this isn't something new. This is in seminaries. This is hermeneutics 101. This is about just reading the Bible in context. And I think since as early as the 2nd and 3rd and even the 4th century where this really took shape with the Emperor Constantine, Christianity has set itself in opposition to this Jewish story through what biblical scholars and uh, historians have called replacement theology or supersessionism. This is the belief that really the Christian church has replaced ethnic Israel, the physical descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, in their role in the gospel story because of their rejection of Jesus as their Messiah. And I think this way of thinking has caused so many Gentiles, disciples of Jesus, to uh, just see the Jewish scriptures, what we would just call the Old Testament today, as either irrelevant or unimportant for us, or even at best, just a bunch of prophecy that points to Jesus and what he did at the first coming. And oftentimes the things that the Old Testament says about the future of the Jewish nation and even the Gentiles are an afterthought, or they take a back seat to the things that Jesus did at the first coming. Now, in no way am I minimizing what Jesus did when he came the first time. I think I'm just saying that it's important for us to see those things in context to the larger story of the Bible. Because the Old Testament has been building a story that didn't come to its ultimate climax or its final conclusion in the first century with the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Scholars and theologians throughout history really called uh, this or used the word apocalyptic to describe the worldview, the perspective, the uh, eschatology of the Jews of the first century. And this means just that the themes that are so often developed by the law and the prophets, themes like the day of the Lord, the resurrection from the dead, uh, eternal life, the day of judgment, the kingdom of God, these themes were very real tangible future realities that were on the minds of Jesus' hearers and flowing off of Jesus' lips as he spoke. And I think the first century Jews understood really from their own scriptures that history was moving toward this climactic end, that 
When the Messiah appears, the righteous would be rewarded, the wicked would be punished, the age to come would be launched, and God would set up a kingdom of righteousness with the Messiah reigning in glory over the nations from Jerusalem. So as we approach the life and the words of Jesus, words that are perhaps more familiar to us um, than the Old Testament, we would do well to remember that Jesus was Jewish, talking to Jewish people, addressing very Jewish themes and affirming Jewish ideas from their scriptures. Now, this doesn't mean that the words in the life of Jesus don't matter to us as 21st century Gentiles and Westerners. Of course they do. In my experience, they matter a great deal more when we see them through this first century Jewish apocalyptic lens. Because as the apostles go on to make clear from their writings, this gospel story had not come to be a completely different story than what they had been expecting, as if Jesus redefined or reimagined the prophecies of the Jewish scriptures, but rather this was a continuing story that the life and death and resurrection of Jesus confirmed to be true. And this is what the apostles write about throughout the book of Acts and their epistles. Like I think of passages like Acts 17, um, verse 31, I think, where Paul says that God has fixed the day that he's going to judge the world in righteousness by the man that he has appointed. And the proof is that he's raised him from the dead. And I think Paul strongly is affirming Jewish eschatology and the Jewish story there. Also, you get Peter in like 2 Peter 1, verse 19, really because of what he saw in the transfiguration. Um, he says, we have the words of the prophets made more certain, and you do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises. So not only are we as 21st century Western disciples of Jesus invited to understand this very Jewish story and our place as the Gentiles, the nations in this story, but we're invited to participate in it, to boldly tell others about it, and to long for its ultimate conclusion, which is eternal life in a resurrected body, the restoration of all creation, the administration of God's blessing to the world through Abraham's descendants in the age to come when Jesus returns and reigns on David's throne in Jerusalem. This epic story is designed to thrill our hearts so much more than the Western narrative where you just accept Jesus into your heart, live a nice life, and then go to heaven and float on a cloud forever. I wanted to talk about this because there's been nothing more invigorating to my faith than seeing the details of the broader story of the Bible and understanding my place as a 21st century Gentile in that story. I can't tell you how much I've grown in love and obedience as I've seen the details of the scriptures as real, verifiable events in history and how my anticipation for all that God has promised is going to come to pass. So I'm going to be putting out some more shorter videos like this one addressing themes around these topics and so much more in the days ahead. So like, share, and subscribe for more. I also have a full series on the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that's more formal than these videos. Um, so check those out on my YouTube channel. And I hope that they're a blessing and encouragement to your faith. Well, God bless you and Maranatha.